Start Adam. Before we start the class. Voice. Voice. Before we start the class, a disclaimer. Act is very, very, very complicated in nature. This chapter is something where final students used to take it as a choice. This chapter for your inter level is going to come for at least a 10 marks. As per I say, it is 5 to 10 marks, but I'm expecting more than this. 5 to 10 marks meant Ekura Wale. But as per I say, it is 5 to 10 marks, but it will fetch you more than 5 to 10 marks. It will give a basic understanding of the act. Up until here, we have studied only the Companies Act. Companies Act and LLP. LLP is basically the Companies Act itself. We are jumping into completely a different kind of law, a foreign exchange law. This is completely new for you. SEBI law, at least in some places, is linked. FEMA never was linked to us. FEMA is completely new to us. I want you guys to be completely with me throughout the class. And today's class, this chapter in our syllabus, fortunately, they have not given the full syllabus. Motan syllabus is available. Each and day in the adjudication procedures, appeal procedures, civil the moment again, the chapter contains of 49 sections. 49 sections on a chapter law, but they have given only six or seven sections and six sections in our syllabus. Only six sections. But those six sections will be 90% of the act. <laughs> the remaining part of act is just adjudication and appeals. That process is not given to us. We have been given only with the basic understanding of FEMA. So FEMA in our classes will divide them into three part parts. Three parts are divided, yes, three parts are discussed, yes, first part the definitions. If you are not aware of the definitions, why FEMA was introduced, why the reason foreign exchange is required, EROJ class. If this is not understood, you are not required to come to the next three, four classes. EROJ class proper gardhangaleda, EROJ class mit concentrate chaleda, next two classes Rawals Nausan Ledu. Next two classes, next three classes probably will be completely based on one single definition we are going to study today. But our definition of the way, I'll give a background about what is FEMA, why FEMA is introduced, what is the preamble, what is the objective of the lawmaker. Objective of lawmaker properly, preamble proper then we will be understanding the definitions. Our definition, I want one particular definition to be very clear in your mind. Each and every word of definition would be important. Our definition of the way, next to two classes, next two parts of FEMA. Otherwise, leave FEMA. Choice. It is this for an option later because there is no possibility. 10 marks at least of them. A question loss, they at last say three marks or four marks or five marks. Any clarity later. And final level low. Most of the students, if you have any seniors at final level, ask them. First chapter they'll take a choice is FEMA. First chapter they'll take a choice is FEMA. Only reason they are taking choice FEMA as a choice is they don't understand the basics of it. In the coaching act, reasons are done. Our reasons mean that I am going to spend so much of time. This is not for exam, but understanding the law. So I am going to spend so much of time on the background of it so that you will understand why law was introduced. Then we will jump into the definitions. Out of which one particular definition very, very important for us. We already know resident, residential status else. Kadama. So income tax act, loan the residential status, we are going to study a complete different the uh, residential status similar but not identical. It is similar but not identical. Half of the chapter's questions will be based on that residential status. Based on the residential status, other two parts of FEMA will be depending upon. So there are certain rules and regulations which depend upon your residential status. As your income tax states that if you are a resident, your global tax will be taxable or Indian tax, Indian income will be taxable. If you are a resident of India, Global income will be taxable if you are a non-resident only what income will be taxable. So basically based on your residential status, the applicability of income tax is depending upon. Similarly, based on your resident status, the regulation and management of foreign exchanges depend upon. So first understanding regulations would be easier only when you understand the residential status. We'll go through all the processes. First give me the act name. What's the act name? Foreign Exchange Management Act. This was introduced in the year 1999. What's the act's name? Foreign Exchange Management Act 1999. Before we jump into this foreign exchange, I will give you the background of it. Foreign exchange was not the, in 1999, this was not the first year in which foreign exchange was a concept introduced to India. Before this 1999, we had an act called as FERA, Foreign Exchange Regulation Act. So what's the difference between FERA and FEMA? R and M. 
previously it used to do what regulations now it is we will understand what is regulation what is management so foreign exchange regulation act this foreign exchange regulation act was introduced not introduced it was repealed and reenacted in the year 1973 year lo ichindam ide 1973 this was simply a restructuring of the previous fera similar to our companies act companies act was there in 1956 then it was repealed and reenacted a new law was introduced in which year 2013 similarly fera in india was initially introduced in 1947 what is 1947 resembling to our independence we got independence in on which date 15th of august 1947 we got independence and in the same year the fera act was introduced so fera act was introduced by which law british law or the indian law it was introduced by the british law it was done before 15th august 1947 so the britishers decided to introduce a completely new act to us which was not implemented by the british law which was not used by the indians which were not we were not as a indian having any knowledge about this law they have introduced it left india we were left in a position where there was an act existing but we don't understand the act people of india never understood the logic of foreign exchange because it was never implemented go back to other laws 19 uh, contract act introduced in 1872 it was introduced by british law and british government itself it was implemented by british government it's also for a certain period of time we understood what was contract act by the time of independence but in case of fera what happened this fera act was introduced in march 1947 what happened in march 1947 fera was introduced they introduced fera the left india whether we had any understanding of the law whether we had any meaning any wordings under fera act which this fera act was completely misunderstood by the president and prime ministers back then that's the only reason we are still underdeveloped i feel we as an indian in entity as a country we had so much of resources we had so much of natural resources we have so much of a human resources but we are still considered to be underdeveloped only because one particular wrong activity done by the prime ministers president back in 1947 not understanding fera fera was misunderstood for the 40 50 years to four or five decades it was misunderstood then we started understanding why this act was introduced why this act is important for us as a country in the year 1990s slowly there was changes from the logic of regulation to management then we have introduced a logic of fema so first we go back to independence 1947 who gave us independence we were under which control british government till 1947 after 1947 we got independence and we started ruling our own country under indian rule or british rule after 1947 before 1947 british rule this 1947 independence to india was brought in major reason for independence was not the resolutions not the protest which was done in india but the world war 2 which ended in 1945 i might offend some people but the famous leaders you uh, worship or you are aware of they are not the only reason i am not saying they are the they are not completely useless they are the not only the reason why independence got into india independence was introduced because of major reason was world war 2 what happened in world war 2 it was basically because of Ad adolf hitler tell some of tell sa parichay unda who is head of hitler he is a nazi leader a german leader so what was done this head of hitler he was a dictator he it was not a democratic country it was a dictator he started invading all the countries in the europe you imagine just for now it is in europe okay adi europe ma okay germany the nazi uh, dictator adolf hitler adi germany ma <laughs> so he started what happened is in the late 1930s what happened in late 1930s he started invading all the countries in and around germany in yes said he started invading all the countries in and around germany and he was succeeding every time he was invading a country he was having such a arm force that he used to indicate that i am coming for invasion before time 
war normally happens on a surprise element uh, recent ga wars avutnay kada ma you have seen russia ukraine you are now seeing palestine case all the wars happen basically on a surprise element but russia this adolf hitler was someone who used to declare that i'm going to come and invade on this particular this particular time through this area and he still used to succeed in this he had soldiers ready for the war they used to take some medical pills where they were awake for 48 50 hours at a stretch for war purposes so what happened all the men of germany were forced into war and they were invading all the countries around germany and eventually if this was not stopped the british government would also be a target to the german government adavutna unna all the european countries were eventually will be in control of adolf hitler if that was not stopped and they have captured almost all the countries except the united kingdom british government so british government had to take an action then they had to take an action to stop adolf hitler otherwise they would also be a target for the invasion so they along with us us and uk were alliances back then and russia itself as well india was not part of this war world war 2 india and the part in led down lo us and uk and russia germany and japan were a part reasons are parties nothing just going to go to us uk and russia germany and japan were one part so uk and us and obviously germany also they started developing nuclear bombs open high na movie chusara ma at least know about the nuclear bombs only one nuclear bomb was used against public human kind in japan hiroshima and which was used by the us government us government used a nuclear bomb now adolf hitler this is only a speculation he consumed cyanide and he committed suicide then the uk government started invading germany and slowly adolf hitler committed suicide and after the his suicide japan was still continuing the war to stop japan from war us has dropped a nuclear bomb on japan and based on the uh, dropping of nuclear bomb in 1945 the war has ended then japan has officially declared to be surrendered so what happens in a war whether japan has lost so much of lives so much of uh, infrastructure so much of a uh, healthcare education so much of people so much of money so whether japan was at loss during the war Uh, what is something understand this properly what is something where the party losing and the party winning are at loss all the time uk has won the war that means they've also lost money they've also lost lives they've also lost growth of the country they've also lost industries they've also lost education medical care it is affecting one party or both the parties so war is always negative for the winning country or the losing country or both the countries so basically what happened even though the british government won the world war 2 they had less amount of resources available because they have put every single resource available for beating the war they won the war but they had less amount of money now uk government he is back then in 1945 they are still controlling india well now what happened is 1945 they won the war they had very less amount of resources and at the same time there was revolutions running in india they were unable to control this revolutions with the resources which are limited in nature they decided eventually we are not going to be able to control india because india is very vast in nature number of revolutions throughout the india was carrying on number of protests was carrying on and we are not having enough money to control or continue this country they decided they are going to give independence we have not taken independence from them they have given us the independence <laughs> they have given independence in which year 1947 so before they gave independence they have introduced the act called as foreign exchange regulation act 1947 which was introduced in which year 1947 in which month march march of 1947 they have introduced a new law to us now understand this properly in the next two or three months we'll get a independence whether people will be focus about a new law whether president or the leaders will be focused on the new law and before 1947 before they have given us the 
independence they started a conflict between two religions in our country muslim and indian uh, hindus even the magada they started in they intentionally started a conflict between india to separate india into two parts idea on the more east pakistan west pakistan bangladesh was also part of pakistan initially later stage they fought a war with pakistan along with india india helped bangladesh to be separated independent uh, having independence in 1972 before that that was part of pakistan no what happened is british government started a intentional conflict between two religions muslim and hindu and started separating them if you have knowledge about this jinna idea unnaramma he was a president of pakistan so what happened i am not only blaming such person all the presidents all the leaders back then are always lucrative to have a position after india got into independence and they lucrated every person to have their own position if there are two countries can i say there will be two positions if there is only one country there will be only one prime minister if there are two countries so they started creating a conflict based on religion and there was so much of conflict happening then now tell me based on the conflict between hindu muslim based on the partitions based on the riots which were happening based on the protests which were happening does anyone focus upon a new law does anybody read it does anybody understand this law no nobody had focused on this law in 1947 and after independence has been given to us pakistan was separated east and west pakistan and india was separated after india got separated we this foreign exchange understand this word foreign exchange regulation management word tarva chudam foreign exchange anadan cheskondi answer cheyandamma whether this is a piece of paper yes or no answer cheyandi ante whether it is a piece of paper yes whether it has an authorization from rbi whether this has a value now same in the same dimensions in the same format i give a paper signed by me whether that piece of paper has any value it is just a piece of paper for us so if in the logic allege in my here proper ga this is called as a currency currency note currency note is something which is used for the purpose of exchange before currency note was introduced we had system called as barter what is barter system exchange of goods for goods so after the process of because it is difficult to always find goods for exchange purposes we have created a medium of exchange called as currency this rupee note this currency note is useful only in india am i right india includes the 12 nautical miles of india until 12 nautical miles it is considered from the border baseline from the mass of india till 12 nautical miles it is considered to be india in this province we can use this paper as a means of exchange once you go out of this province for say you are traveling ekkadiki velaramma out of india russia gal okay for example you are going to so you are going to japan okay ఈ రూపీ నోట్ తీసుకెళ్ళు ఓకే యూ టుక్ హండ్రెడ్ రూపీస్ ఆఫ్ నోట్ టు జపాన్ అండ్ ఆఫ్టర్ ఎంట్రింగ్ ఇన్ టు ట్రాన్సాక్షన్ విత్ జపనీస్ పర్సన్ యూ పేడ్ ఇన్ రూపీస్ ఏం చేస్తారు కొడతారు వెదర్ దిస్ హ్యాస్ ఎనీ వాల్యూ ఇన్ జపాన్ వెదర్ దిస్ హ్యాస్ వాల్యూ ఇన్ ఇన్ ఇండియా దిస్ కరెన్సీ హ్యాస్ వాల్యూ ఓన్లీ బేస్డ్ ఆన్ ఇట్స్ కంట్రీ it has value only in india and 12 nautical miles from india other than india whether it has any value this is just a piece of paper for them in the same way in the same way if i bring in dollar here dollar in india is also a piece of paper because it is not used as a exchange in india what is used as an exchange in india only a rupee a dollar currency note in india will not be considered as a currency it will be considered as a commodity it is considered as a simple piece of paper it is considered as a good good definition gutundamma chinna appudu bro nechukunnam kada goods means every kind of movable property other than actionable claims and currency 
their currency means only the currency which is availed in this particular country, rupees. If I bring in a dollar, whether I can say it is a good, yes, it is considered as a commodity, it is not considered as a currency. What is currency for India? Rupees. What is the currency outside India? There are multiple currency based on a country. Now, understand this. We, for example, are traveling out of India. Say we are going to the US. We are going to the US for which if at all we go to US, the currency used in US is dollars. We have to have dollars for entering into transactions in US. We are having what in our pocket? Imagine just one pocket. Rupees. We have huge amount of rupees. We have say 10 crores of rupees. Okay, we are going to the US. Russia We had how much? Sir, next example. Pakka, next example. Pakka, we had how much rupees in our hands? Whether these rupees are useful in US? What is required for US? Dollars. Dollar in India is a good or is a currency? Is a it is a commodity simply. Now what happens is whenever you are going out of India, whenever you are requiring an expense or any kind of a outlay in dollars, you are not having dollars in your pocket, you are having only rupees. So you go on to purchase the commodity dollar. Understand this properly, you are not purchasing a currency, you are purchasing a good. You went and purchased with this 10 crore rupees, you purchase X amount of a dollars. India alone, we have entered into contract. We have entered into contract by selling what? We have given rupees. Consideration is paid for purchase of a good. What is the good purchased here? Dollars are purchased. The dollars so purchased will be used for transactions in India or outside India. Outside India, dollars cannot be used in India. Rupees cannot be used in the US. So we have entered into contract for exchange of currencies called as foreign exchange. We are making an exchange of two different currencies. Logic this is a transaction entered by you for purchasing a commodity, purchasing a good, a foreign currency. What do you mean by foreign currency? The draftman had the same knowledge as you. Mananta Buddha Nadi Goda. Foreign currency means a currency which is exactly correct answer. Other than a Indian currency. Reporting currency in a word later. Foreign exchange is only based on India. Mir Nechkuna accounting standard is based on global activity. So if you are in India, what is your reporting currency? Indian rupees. If you are in for say Japan, your Indian uh, your reporting currency will be yen. But FEMA applies only to that means reporting currency will always be anything other than Indian currency will be considered as a Dani link check and make it up. FEMA applies only to India. Mean each one foreign exchange that applies to global level. Accounting standard is applied. Uh, those accounting standards are basically drafted copy pasted from what? IFRS. IFRS applies to at a global level, not to a particular country. Answer to make it up. With this 10 crore rupees of 10 crore rupees, you have purchased an amount of dollars. This dollars will be used outside India. Even an out on the simple like that. So I'll give an example. Tell me the process now. We wanted to import certain goods into India. You wanted to do what? An import. For the import, whether we have to pay consideration. Whether the outsider will expect a consideration in rupees. Because he cannot use rupees outside India. He wants a exchange consideration payable in rupees or other currencies. Other currencies, if for example, it is Germany or it is UK. Russia is It is UK. If it is UK, what currency will be used there? Pounds. They want the payment to be done in. But we are having what? What shall be done? Before payment of this consideration contract, we have to enter into another contract. Another contract for what? Purchase of. Purchase of. We are not going to purchase pounds. We are still going to purchase dollars. We are still going to purchase dollars. Dollars are accepted as a means of currency anywhere in the world. That's why dollar currency has a power. 
US has powers not because it is the most developed country, not because it has huge amount of technology, not because it has huge amount of resources, because their currency is accepted at a global level. If at all you go through technology, there are different countries which are technologically advanced. There are different countries which are higher GDP than US. But why is US considered as so powerful? Because they have a currency which is accepted at a global level. So all the foreign exchanges are always done from their country's currency with the dollar. So what happens? You understand this. We are going to sell the rupees in India and we are going to purchase dollars. We are going to pay in dollars. The importer, the exporter outside India, the person in UK is going to receive what? He is going to sell the dollars and receive. He is going to receive his pounds. Always it is done in dollars because dollars could be sold and purchased easily at the global market. That's why dollars are also called as global currency. Indian currency where global currency where global currency means dollars. Always exchanges will be done in dollars. But for the last one, two years after Russia Ukraine war, US, the Western continents, everything is putting restrictions on Russia, the ruble uh, payments and exports and imports to Russia. India and Russia have a long relation between each other for the initial wars also. Starting the wars, but if you have knowledge about this or not, UK and US started trying to invade India through helping Pakistan. But it was stopped because of Russian submarines patrolling under Indian Ocean. So basically Russia stopped a war between US and India. Because Russia helped us. So we had a long relation with Russia from the beginning. Now Russia and India are entering into contract where they will do the trading not because of dollars but in rubles and rupees. Russian currency in term of rubles, Indian currency, rupees. So we are going to enter into contract directly through rupees and rubles. It will eliminate the dominance of dollar in global currency. Contracts are happening, BRICS sells. BRICS also they are trying to come up with their own currency. If five countries create a currency create them. We are going to exchange in that particular currency. It, should, it will indirectly reduce the dominance of US in the market again. So global market as done today, what happens in the global market? We are purchasing and selling only dollars. So I have no doubts. I have no only background. I have no calls and logics. What happens when you are exporting or importing goods out of India and into India? Are we using rupees as the currency? Rupees is something which is used only in our country or outside India. Rupees are not accepted out of India. Dollars are accepted. At a global level, it can be used anywhere. But Indian rupees are used only in India and up to 12 nautical miles of India. But outside India, whether we are using Indian currency or foreign currency. So payments of all the exports and imports will be done in. Foreign currency for an Indian citizen would be. For a person who is residing in India, foreign currency would be a commodity or a currency. Commodity. Dollar will be considered as a commodity. Can I purchase the commodity? Can I sell the commodity? Yes. So, if at all I am exporting goods, importing goods from US, I will purchase what? Dollars and pay in dollars. If I am purchasing goods from UK, I am still going to purchase dollars and pay in. After dollars are paid, the person in UK is going to sell the dollars available with him to purchase. Pounds. Logic okay, I can't do it. Do you Who is selling us to? Who is selling us the dollars? Who is selling us the dollars? It's we have understood that we have to purchase dollars for the purpose of payment. But who is selling the dollars? RBI. Who is selling the dollars? Banks? No. Banks are only intermediaries in the process. They are not selling it directly. Who controls and manages all these processes? Directly the central government. Directly done by the central government. Today the administrative powers have been delegated to RBI obviously. But ultimate power ever shared law on the central government. Central government basically maintains a reserve. This is called as a foreign exchange reserve or a foreign exchequer. Either a word you should anything is fine. Foreign exchequer or foreign exchange reserve. Understand the meaning of this foreign reserve. In 1947, go back to 1947. In 1947, the British government, when they were leaving India, they took every single penny and left India. They took everything with them. 
the foreign exchange reserve had zero dollars nothing left in the reserve now if anybody wants to import goods to india edana imports cheyalante what should be done process and understand cheskunama start thinking as a importer you want to import certain technology or certain goods into india for the purpose of import you have to pay in you have to pay in which currency dollars but in order to purchase dollars because you are not having dollars in your hand you are having only rupees you have to go to the government you have to go to the government to purchase what government will be able to sell dollars when they have dollars in their reserve government had no dollar reserve in 1947 because everything was taken by british government we had nothing left in our foreign reserve so the interpretation of this law started wrongfully where the central government back in 1947 understood that we have to preserve this foreign exchange we have to make sure that we are not going to give the foreign exchange free of a in a freely tradable environment we are not allowing any foreign exchange because we are not having foreign reserve we are not having foreign reserve that means we are not going to allow the foreign exchange to any person in india if there was a person in 1947 wants to go out of india for a medical treatment medical treatment medical le chepich kolandi em kavale dollars where the government used to provide dollars no they used to say die here we are not going to provide a foreign currency there was such rigid in nature in 1947 if you want to die die in our soil itself no matter we will be proud for you but we are not going to give you dollars we are not going to provide you any dollars because we have no access to dollars by ourselves they were so rigid in nature technology import cheskovali dollars isthama no If you want to go out of India for education purpose, will you provide me dollars? I will not provide you dollars. I want to go for a medical treatment out of India. Will you provide me dollars? No. Everything was prohibited. Wording go to bed, Pandey. Everything under Ferrari in 1947 was everything was everything. Every single concept was prohibited unless it was the ultimate necessary for the country. Ultimate necessary is this certain amount of food, certain amount of uh, grains were imported. for which we require foreign exchange to be paid those were accepted other than that 99% of cases everything was prohibited and fera was something which is a criminal law it was not a civil law civil liability criminal liability topics hotunay ma criminal law there is a penalty of punishment but civil law it is only imposing a fine criminal law is something where it imposes what imprisonment civil law ante ente they'll impose only fine of para provisions were criminal in nature if they find out that you are doing any foreign exchange transaction you are put in the imprisonment that was so rigid in nature we wanted to stop the foreign exchange reserve to be depleting we wanted to preserve it so we started reducing the amount of usage from the foreign reserve now understand this foreign reserve on a concept pakkan pedesandi give me the basic logic from this you have 10 lakh rupees in your hand man cheyithle entu naema As a commerce student, proper allocation chances are normal. You have 10 lakh rupees in your hand. You have two options here: either deposit this 10 lakh rupees into a bank account and sit down, assuming it will be preserved, assuming taking no risk, and it will increase at a future period. Or you have second option to take a risk and do business activities. Which is better? business it will increase it will generate more amount of income through it so government was focused upon preserving government was initially focused upon what process preserving we are not going to allow business activities we are not going to allow technology to come into india we are not going to allow to allow people to go out of india and educate themselves we are not going to allow any kind of imports of imported goods into india we are not going to allow any kind of high quality of goods into india we are going to completely preserve it we'll keep it in a preserved box we'll restrict the possibility of foreign exchange this was in which year 1947 where we had less amount of a foreign exchange in later stage in 1973 the fema act was reconstituted where they started liberalizing the act koncham provisions add chesadu koncham privileges add chesadu now you can go out of india for medical expenses now you can go out of india for technological purposes a little liberalization was done but still our intention was that we are going to restrict everything we were under a criminal law restrict everything unless it is permitted by the central government everything was restricted everything was prohibited everything was regulated every single transaction was now kept eye upon everything was regulated 
but later stage after 1973 in 1991 in 1991 what happened we went through an economic crisis economic crisis where we had very less amount of very minute amount of foreign exchange foreign exchange in 1991 we have come to a situation where in the next one week the foreign exchange will be completely depleted one week low foreign exchange motam depleted by zero kochas in the year 1991 we were not open to the outside market till 1991. We got independence in 1947. Till 1991, we, Atma Bharat, self sufficient Bharat, self sufficient India. We have to be self sufficient. We should not be depending upon anyone from outside. Our intention, we are not gonna, we are not gonna question any person because of this. Because British government came into India for trading activities and they eventually conquered India and they have looted Indian resources for so many years, so many decades. Our intention from the beginning was that nobody from outside is good for the country. So we are not allowed anything. But in 1991, the economic crisis, after hitting of economic crisis, we understood the importance of not preserving but regenerating the foreign exchange. Hence, we have opened up the country. Opening of country, globalization was done because of this foreign exchange. Foreign exchange, well-lochin, globalization, privatization, liberalization. Radang reason in Dama. Foreign exchange. Our foreign exchange reserve was very low. Very low that it could have been completed within one week. Imagine during one week low foreign exchange completed even. We could not import goods. We could not import even food grains. We could not import any kind of a basic necessaries. In such situation, if Pakistan starts a war, imagine that properly. If Pakistan starts a war, can we import our, uh, our any army from any country? Can we import weapons? Can we sustain the war? Because war will be sustained based on huge amount of money expenditure. If you are not having proper technology, we will be importing technology. Even today, India imports huge amount of warfare technology from Russia today. Even today, we are importing a huge amount of warfare from Russia. That will be done only when you have a foreign exchange. So basically, foreign exchange is useful for protecting us as a country. So the foreign reserve in 1991 was so depleted that we had no other option there. We had to be opened up. And we went and entered into contract with WTO. What is WTO? World Trade Organization. We became a member of WTO. And we stated that we are open for investments into India. And we are going to allow Indians to go and invest outside India. This was done in which year? 1991, where the outside country, the world, accepted India with open hands. Eventually, in 1994 or 1995, the foreign exchange reserves started increasing by themselves. Then we understood we have done the wrong thing for the last 30 40 years. We have done the wrong thing by preserving it rather than generating a turnover from the foreign exchange reserve. Then we understood the importance of liberalizing the act even further. Then we set up a committee for understanding the risk regulations and brought in the FEMA provisions in 1999. So, 1999 FEMA was brought in with the intention to do what? Expand the process of international trading of goods and services, international payment of goods, international receipt of payments. All this has been expanded under which law? FEMA. FERA stated only one word of FERA was prohibition. In yes, na, a activity and a word use shall prohibit everything. You word the FERA uses the word prohibit everything unless I specifically permit, unless I specifically state that this is allowed, everything else is prohibited but FEMA changed the complete sentence stated that everything is permissible except when I prohibit it except when I restrict it either restrict or prohibit everything is allowed everything is permitted now we have become more liberal in nature we are allowing foreign exchange we are gonna provide foreign exchange now now don't get me wrong here we are still regulating word we are still regulating Act Parenti Rojo, Foreign Exchange Management Act, but we are still regulating activities. If you want to go, for example, if you want money, foreign exchange, you went to the central government, central government will ask why you want a foreign exchange. Central government is not going to blindly give you foreign exchange because maintenance of that reserve is important for the country's growth. From, uh, foreign Exchange Management Act or the RBI still tries to preserve and manage the foreign exchange in such a manner that it is not negatively affecting the reserve. Reserve deplete our gordu. So they are going to always ask you why. Why are you taking foreign exchange for the purpose? If at all you provided the reason. I am going to go to Las Vegas for gambling activities. 
ఏం చేస్తుంది ఆర్బీఐ ప్రొవైడ్ చేస్తుంది ఫారెన్ ఇస్ ద గ్యాంబ్లింగ్ యాక్టివిటీస్ వెదర్ యూ లూజ్ నైంటీ నైన్ పర్సెంట్ ఆఫ్ కేసెస్ గ్యాంబ్లింగ్ యాక్టివిటీస్ ఆర్ డ్రాఫ్ట్ ఇన్ సచ్ మ్యానర్ దట్ యూర్ ఆల్వేస్ దట్ మీన్స్ ఇండియన్ డాలర్ రిజర్వ్ ఈజ్ యూజ్డ్ ఫర్ ద పర్పస్ ఆఫ్ లాటరీ ఆర్ గ్యాంబ్లింగ్ అవుట్ సైడ్ ఇండియా ఆమె కానీ అలౌ దిస్ నో దేర్ ఆర్ స్టిల్ రెగ్యులేషన్స్ ఆన్ సర్టెన్ యాక్టివిటీస్ దేర్ ఆర్ స్టిల్ ప్రొహిబిషన్స్ ఆన్ సర్టెన్ యాక్టివిటీస్ బట్ మేజర్ ఫోకస్ వుడ్ బి ఆన్ మేనేజ్మెంట్ ప్రీవియస్లీ వాట్ ఎవ్రీథింగ్ వాజ్ ప్రొహిబిటెడ్ ఎక్సెప్ట్ ఐ పర్మిట్ అండర్ ఫెమా ఎవ్రీథింగ్ ఈజ్ పర్మిటెడ్ ఎక్సెప్ట్ వెన్ ఐ ఫార్ ద ప్రొహిబిటెడ్ ట్రాన్సాక్షన్ ఆమె స్టిల్ రెగ్యులేటింగ్ ఫారెన్ ఎక్స్చేంజ్ ఎస్ ఆమె స్టిల్ రెగ్యులేటింగ్ ఎస్ ద ఫారెన్ ఎక్స్చేంజ్ మేనేజ్మెంట్ స్టిల్ యూజెస్ ద వర్డ్ మేనేజ్మెంట్ అండ్ రెగ్యులేషన్ ప్రీవియస్లీ దర్ వాజ్ ఓన్లీ regulation we are going to only preserve it we are going to only prohibit transactions now we are going to allow it for activities but still going to prohibit for certain activities so act still uses the word management and regulation but act lo peer marcham so that people will understand the intensity of the act for an exchange management act 80% of the act is management 20% is still kept as regulation we are going to still prohibit we are going to still regulate it so what is important for us so the act you have to understand the act based on the foreign exchange exchequer foreign exchequer or called as foreign reserve reserve base me the alojana start cheyanam stop thinking as a individual start thinking from the government's point of view government always tries to maintain a minimum balance in the reserve for such reserve maintenance they are created rules and regulations so your understanding for the next 4 5 days would be based on government point of view from indian point of view for preserving and managing the proper foreign exchange reserves in india deeni preserve cheyadam kosam manam chese activities enti foreign exchange management act for preserving this foreign exchange reserves in india we have divided the transactions which can be entered in foreign exchange into two parts capital account transactions and current account transactions there are two kind of transactions based on the type of transaction there are different rules and regulations any types of transactions are there two types para ke liye answer se vende para has so many types of transactions there were no transaction bifurcation everything was prohibited there is no requirement of bifurcation prati transaction would end starts with the word prohibited but under fema we state that it is permitted and for the purpose of making sure that certain transaction are permitted and certain unnecessary activities are prohibited we have divided the transactions into two categories so what are the two categories capital account transaction and current account transaction to give you a basic understanding capital account transactions are your assets and liabilities balance sheet current account transactions are your incomes and expenditures pnl capital account and current account transaction current account transaction comes under section number 5 capital account transaction comes under section number 6 and act is divided we are going to divide the act into three categories three categories will first part we will understand the definitions and background of fema second we are going to understand capital account transaction then we are going to understand current account transaction chapter is done so under capital account transaction what are the activities which are permissible what are the activities which are prohibited we are going to learn then moving to current account transaction we are going to learn what are the transaction which are permissible allowed what are the transaction which are prohibited chapter would be done this is our syllabus this is our syllabus for our inter level so we are going to learn what under fema in our syllabus first background understand the act and definitions after you are understood the definitions we will move to the capital account capital account comes under section number you will be able to understand current account only when you are done with capital account transaction so first we will start with section 6 then we will move on to section 5 section 6 gives about capital account transaction assets and liabilities and section 5 gives about current account transactions ఏమైనా డౌట్స్ ఉన్నాయి ఇక్కడ దాకా సో స్టార్ట్ ఎట్ స్టార్ట్ గివింగ్ ద బేసిక్స్ అండ్ డిఫరెన్సెస్ బిట్వీన్ ఫెరా అండ్ ఫెమా దిస్ ఇస్ నాట్ రిక్వైర్డ్ ఫర్ ఎగ్జామ్ దిస్ ఓన్లీ ఫర్ యువర్ అండర్స్టాండింగ్ ఫెరా ఇనిషియలీ కేమ్ ఇన్ ద ఇయర్ ఐ వాంట్ ఆన్సర్స్ ప్రాపర్లీ నైన్టీన్ ఫార్టీ సెవెన్ లేటెస్ట్ స్టేజ్ ఇట్ వాజ్ రీ ఎనాక్టెడ్ టు నైన్టీన్ సెవెంటీ త్రీ దెన్ లేటెస్ట్ స్టేజ్ బికాస్ ఆఫ్ గ్లోబలైజేషన్ రిక్వైర్మెంట్ ఆఫ్ లిబరలైజింగ్ ద యాక్ వీ హ్ ఇంట్రడ్యూస్డ్ Fema in the year 1999 under fera what whether there was different type of transactions no under fema we have transaction how many types of transactions are there what are the two types of transaction capital account transactions and current account transaction capital account transaction coming under section 
section 6 and current account transactions under section number 5. Para has a single word used throughout the act. Prohibited. Everything is prohibited except when I permit. FEMA uses the word everything is permissible except when I prohibit. FERA was criminal law or civil law? If you say if I'm holding a foreign exchange, even holding foreign exchange is not allowed. Even today for holding foreign exchange is not allowed. If you're having anything above a particular limit of dollars in your hand, you can be put in jail. That was under FERA. But under FEMA, if you are found to be having dollars in your hand above this prescribed limit, it is a civil law. There will only be punishments. So, FERA was focusing upon what? Prohibition or regulation or uh, management. Prohibition where there was regulating each and every transaction. But under FEMA, we are more focused on. I cannot use the word only focused upon management. We are more focused on management, but we still regulate. So we are managing and regulating foreign exchange in India. So, can you share more? FERA <coughs> uses, FERA had total of 81 sections. Any sections on that? 81. The act also got reduced. FEMA has only 49 sections, reduced amount of sections. Because there was more amount of prohibitions, there were more number of sections. Because we have reduced the prohibitions, we have less number of sections now. Only how many sections? 49 sections. FERA uses the word regulation or management? Regulation. FERA was rigid about what? Which, was, which act was rigid? Which act was liberal in nature? FERA was rigid. FEMA, was, FEMA is liberal. FERA was rigid about what? About what? Everything. Every single transaction it was rigid about. Everything must be prohibited. But under FEMA, are we rigid or are we liberal in nature? We are liberal in nature, but we are still rigid in one activity. We are rigid in one activity. We want to prohibit certain transactions. We would be able to prohibit those transactions only when we understand why the foreign exchange is received for. If an Indian resident comes to you for foreign exchange, you will provide the foreign exchange. You are happy to provide foreign exchange, but whether you will ask why the foreign exchange has been taken. Foreign Exchange Management Act is still rigid upon the process of disclosures. I want disclosure about everything you do. If proper disclosure is not provided, you will be punishable. I am going to allow you foreign exchange, but I want proper disclosure. Why you are using this money? If at all the disclosure is not properly provided, you will be punishable. If the disclosure is for such prohibited activities, lottery, gambling, horse races, etc. etc. We will discuss them in detail later. If gambling costs some money, whether I will provide that. No. If at all you state that I'm gonna go out of India for a private visit, international tour money Can I use the money? Yes. But that money can it be used for gambling at a later stage? No. I have to give a proper disclosure why I'm taking the money. So disclosure is very, very, very important for FEMA provisions. Under FEMA, what was rigid? Everything. Under FEMA, what is rigid? We are still rigid upon disclosure activity. Properly disclose, take the foreign exchange. We are not rigid on foreign exchange. I'm going to provide for an exchange, but you have to give me proper disclosures. 19. Got implemented from the year 2000. Act approach number 1999 got implemented from 1st June 2000. For an exchange. Foreign exchange reserve. Whether foreign exchange reserve must be properly managed. In 1991, whether we were depleting with the foreign reserves in India, we had only 1 billion. 1 billion might sound big amount, but they had exactly 1.1 I guess, 1 billion, 1 billion and close to 100 crores, 100 crore rupees, converted into dollars, 1 million dollars. So reserve is always maintained in what currency? Dollars, right? This we had how much dollars in our reserve back in 1991? 1 billion, 1 billion, assume this for not an, as an individual for the country. For the country, 1 billion was very less in nature, it could have been depleted within one week. 
today we had a we have a foreign exchange close to 600 billion today we have close to 585 590 something 600 billion da kondu pudu in 1999 it was one only because reason for increase in foreign exchange reserve was we started shifting our understanding from preserving to generating a turnover on the foreign exchange that was possible only because of globalization and the liberalization concept introduced in FEMA law. Now whether we are having huge amount of reserves, we are having huge amount of reserves where we can even compete our reserves with huge countries. Another compared to but other countries. China is very export oriented country, they export a lot of things. But India still imports a lot of things but still exports certain amount of things but we still have a huge amount of reserve today. If at all India goes into war today, or India wants any emergency fund, whether they can use this 600 billion of rupees, 600 billion of dollars for the emergency situation, whether we are self-sufficient now, yes. But whether this maintenance of foreign exchange, if at all, for two years or three years, FEMA is not applying the prohibitions, whether this will be depleted, whether for maintenance of this foreign exchange, FEMA is important for us now. Who is going to maintain this? Who is going to make sure that uh, the reserve is properly maintained? Ultimate power will be in the hands of central government. If you guys remember, companies have not discussed here some. Central government, under central government, we have MCA. What is MCA? Ministry of Corporate Affairs. Under the Ministry of Corporate Affairs, we have RD. What is RD? Regional Directors. Under RD, we have what is ROC? Similarly, under central government, we have the administrative powers given to RBI. What is RBI? Reserve Bank of India. RBI is going to regulate every single activity. So, what happens is, if you want any foreign exchange, if you want any dollars, you are not going to go into a contract with RBI. RBI is not having enough time for 140 crores of population. If any person wants to take a foreign exchange, they are not going to come and directly deal with RBI. RBI has appointed their representative throughout the country. They are called as authorized persons. You have to get a permission from RBI, license from RBI. After getting such license, you will be acting as an authorized person. This authorized person is eligible in dealing with foreign exchange in India. Can I sell foreign exchange to you? Can I sell a dollar to you? That will be a criminal offense. That will be a civil offense here. Offense under money, uh, offense under FEMA provisions. Who can only deal with the foreign exchange provisions? That means if you want to sell dollars or purchase dollars, everything must be done with the intervention of authorized person. Can you export goods and receive money directly into your hands? No. You can receive only through a authorized person. If you are importing goods, can you pay directly from your hands? No. Everything must be done through the authorized person. Without authorized person, nothing happens in India. Every transaction, either it is capital account or it is current account, everything must be done through the authorized person. Anything which is done without the authorized person will be considered as a civil offence. It will be com com committing an offence under FEMA provisions. This authorized person, we will discuss detail about for authorized person later. I will come to basic definitions. E category is okay, original, uh, ultimate power is in the hands of. Then powers are given into RBI, administrating activities and RBI has appointed people called as Authorized persons. You authorized persons. There are three types of authorized persons. We'll discuss about them. They're called as foreign exchange dealers, money changers, and offshore banking units. We'll discuss in detail about all the three. On an exam point of view, all the three in details are also related, but understanding on them. Three people ever foreign exchange dealers, money changers and offshore banking unit. Offshore banking unit, money changer, foreign exchange dealer. I'll give you a basic understanding. Wait a minute. A definition complete is the authorized person. What do you mean by a dealer? A person who is dealing in foreign exchange, who is allowing you to purchase, sell securities outside India. Any security contract will be entered with the hands of foreign exchange dealer. 
money changer simply is a person who is going to convert your do rupees into dollars we can take a license of money changer we can be a money changer for example there is a foreign delegate coming to india staying in a hotel he'll be carrying dollars or rupees dollars a hotel a five star hotels and three star hotels where there is a high amount of uh, foreigners coming in they'll be getting license from rbi to acting as a money changer simple gain yes sir at the reception itself you go and give your dollars they'll provide you rupees a dollars is called a authorized person ever deposit yes counter rbi so money change means a person who is simply converting your rupees into dollars offshore banking unit what is offshore people normally understand this differently offshore means within india onshore ante out of india different ga adhan cheskuntaru meer onshore ante ente out of india on site anta idea undamma if you have software relatives on site elthamu antaru on site ante ente outside india on shore ante outside the indian boundaries offshore ante ente ma within india within india we have this scz areas we have export oriented units eous what is scz special economic zone what is eous export oriented units these areas are majorly set up for the purpose of exporting goods out of india these are given subsidies tax benefits privileges all the privileges are provided to them because of what reason exporting out of india exports increase out exports increase in amna reserve em avutundi increase avutunda start thinking from government point of view when an export is happening they will bring in dollars into india that means the reserve will increase whenever imports are happening we have to pay in dollars that means the dollar reserve will be decreasing so this this scz and eou units are set up for what purpose for exports export chestam ante whether they will be dealing with foreign currency on a regular basis the banks which are set up in this areas are called as offshore banking units they'll help you or facilitate different procedures for the purpose of foreign exchange transfers offshore banking units all three combined are called as what authorized persons this authorized persons are the only persons who are eligible to do foreign exchange in india we will study about this authorized person in detail in section number 3 but you will understand section 3 and 4 only when we are done with 5 and 6 so we are not going to discuss that now basic section and 3 and 4 addam kavalante em kavali first chapter is having how many sections only six sections in our syllabus what is section number 6 capital account transaction what is section 5 current account section 2 always has what definition section 1 always has what introduction the applicability of that applicability and commencement we are going to look into definitions and applicability then we are going to directly jump into capital then we'll come to current after we are done with all these sections these sections will be already understood by you appudu ardham ayipothay avi automatic ardham avuthane cheppal samasam led appudu ఇప్పుడు మనం స్టార్ట్ చేసే డిస్కషన్ దానిలో డౌట్స్ క్రియేట్ అవుతాయమ్మా విల్ స్టార్ట్ ఇట్ ఆఫ్టర్ సెక్షన్ ఫైవ్ అండ్ సిక్స్ సో ఫస్ట్ అప్లికబిలిటీ కంప్లీట్ చేయండి వెర్ ఈస్ ఇట్ అప్లికబుల్ వెన్ ఈస్ ఇట్ ఫ్రమ్ వెన్ ఇట్ ఈస్ అప్లికబుల్ ఫస్ట్ జూన్ టూ థౌజండ్ యాక్ట్ వాస్ ఇంట్రడ్యూస్డ్ ఇన్ విచ్ నైన్టీన్ నైన్టీ వన్ టీమ్ ఎఫెక్టివ్నెస్ ఫ్రమ్ ఫస్ట్ జూన్ నైన్టీన్ నైన్టీ సారీ ఫస్ట్ జూన్ టూ థౌజండ్ ఇట్ ఈస్ అప్లికబుల్ టు ఇట్ ఈస్ అప్లికబుల్ వేర్ అ పార్ట్ ఆఫ్ ఇండియా హోల్ ఆఫ్ ఇండియా it is applicable to whole of india it is applicable to whole of india like and amma vinand idi applicable to vinand proper ga first concept it is applicable to whole of india second point states that it is applicable to all the officers branches and agencies which are set up outside india set up that in india or outside india outside india. understand this if you are setting setting up a business outside india the profits which you are generating from such business activity whether you going to bring it back to india logic adam avutna you are staying where in india but you have set up a office or branch outside india if say we have set up in australia the proceeds which are received from such australian business activity will be brought back into india that will be called as repatriation repatriation means bringing back into india we are bringing all the proceeds from outside india back into india called as what repatriation whether if repatriation concept is done we are going to bring in dollars repatriation avutundi whether we are going to bring in dollars 
if you are bringing in dollars whether there is foreign exchange involved if there is foreign exchange involved whether fema will be applicable so all the officers branch and agencies which are located outside india which are owned by indian person or it is controlled by a indian person owned or controlled by owned or controlled by whom indian person ever want to discuss shalling kaval ikkada ka gurtu pettukon chal first thing it is applicable to whole of india second category it is applicable to such branches officers or agencies which are located outside india but which are owned or controlled by a indian and gurtu pettukon i'll add the word later and any kind of a offense which is contravened any kind of provision which are contravened to the person who is applicable with this act offense ekkada na yundochu anywhere around the world if the act applies to you and you have committed offense i'll be able to implement law upon you if you have made any kind of a contravention of the provisions of fema and you are outside india can i implement this law on you yes contravention ekkada na no ekkada unna padaledu vijay malya for example is in india or outside india he has committed a fraud under fema provisions can i apply the law to him yes it is he is not in india but i can still apply the law to him now i'll give different examples give me the inner meaning of this wordings but the fema applicability ardham kada ma different examples cheptanu answers avandi only focus where the dollars are used or not used aalochin chances avandi you have proper time here we are in india okay class i been dada you went for snacks you paid in you are entering a transaction in india transaction in india entered in which currency indian currency whether there is any involvement of dollars if there is no involvement of dollars whether there is requirement of fema applicable here no in the same case you are in india but you have purchased the snacks with payment of dollars and the person accepted it are you in india are you entering a transaction in india by using indian currency or foreign currency is the law applicable to you is the law applicable to you ekka rasundi if it is applicable the word whole of india itself concludes this point whole of india doesn't only mean that it is a transaction which is done in india with indian currency or dollars if it is done in indian currency whether it is applicable no if it is done in foreign currency whether it is applicable yes a person who is residing in india entering into a transaction in dollars will uh, apply the foreign exchange management act same case this person is going out of india if he is going out of india obviously he will be entering into transaction which are in indian currency or foreign currency foreign currency now our understanding will be based on two words called as pri and proi two words gutundalama complete act is based on these two words person resident of india person resident outside india example shortcuts raikandi example you have to write the full forms current account transactions capital account transactions they are normally called as cut and cat current account cu current account transaction capital account transaction ca okka vela nen mostly i am not going to use the word cut and cat in the class if at all i use the word also manam exam lo matram em raayali full forms raayalamma fema provisions lo ekada cut cut and ledu fema provisions lo ee answers em lo full forms raayali meeru what is pri person resident in india proi a person who is resident outside india a person who is resident in india pri enters into a transaction in india in foreign currency whether fema applies yes a person who is resident in india enters into a transaction outside india if he is entering into a transaction outside india it is obviously in which currency foreign currency if it is in foreign currency whether fema applies obviously fema applies now we have a person who is in india he has set up an agency or a branch outside india whether fema applies because it is owned or controlled by a person resident in india indian ane word pakkan bete sanni ka i want the words person resident in india there is no meaning of citizenship in fema provisions we always use a concept of residential status either pri or proi citizenship makes no sense zero sense under fema provisions citizenship based me the ad usage undadu every person is defined based on his residential status called as what either pri or pr oi last point a person who is outside india that means he is a pr oi who comes into india whether he is going to bring in dollars whether there is a foreign exchange whether act applies 
so act applies in four different situations the first situation where he is a pri resident of india entering into transaction in india with which currency foreign currency where the act applies yes second situation he is a pri pri means person resident of india entering into transaction outside india if he is entering into transaction outside india is obviously in which currency where the act applies yes third situation where he is a pri that means he is a resident of india but he is owning or controlling an agency which is located an agency or a branch or an office which is located where outside india which is owned or controlled by a pri resident of india that will be applicable with the pma provisions because they are going to bring back money into india they are going to bring back dollars into india last situation a person who is proi who is coming into india if he is coming into india he has to enter into transaction which currency india like a a transactions of them are rupees but he is not having access to rupees he is be having what in their hands foreign currency dollars he is going to bring in dollars to india where the fema applies four situations wording seven ma first pri entering into transaction in india with foreign currency next second point pri entering into transaction outside india with foreign currency third pri having a branch office or agency located where that is managed owned or controlled by pri last point proi coming into india they will be applicable with fema provisions ee anni topics are included in the word whole of india whole of india lo meanings are there there are doubts na ikkada we are done with the first section applicability and commencement it is commencing from which date first june 2000 it is applicable to whole of india all whole of india exam lo ee anni rayals avasaram ledama but exam question deen base meda understanding adan cheskonu ante understand this whole of india's proper meaning it includes four different concepts in within itself so what is foreign currency other than indian currency what is currency first place currency doesn't only mean the rupee note it includes everything which is means of an exchange a bills of exchange promissory note letter of credit demand draft traveler's check credit card any credit notes any currency notes any currency documents all these documents are considered to be currency and all such documents which may be notified by rbi rbi notifies anything that will be considered as a currency for india we still have certain definitions foreign currency currency is done your foreign security and person definition idea undu kada ma income tax definition is used here the specific age calls on some level income tax definition answers are and person includes what individual a firm huf aop boi ajp or any office or branch which is located outside india only one point add chain any branch office or agency which is located where outside india we are using the definition of income tax itself we still have foreign security and foreign exchange definition ee rendu ayin tarata we have to start pr i and pr oi i want foreign security and foreign exchange kalu rep discuss cheda i want pr i to be done today pr i ardham ayithe uppudu ga cheppina vaatiki annitiki linking ardham avadi proper ga pr i should be done today next definition we are going to discuss pr i directly in got two definition hai foreign exchange and foreign security i'll discuss that tomorrow first we'll focus on pri pri and pr oi in pri also there are four categories of pri then lo okka category aina chaali rochu naaku first category kota ide chaali aa basic understanding unda chapter mottham addu avadi remember after this definitions are done we are only left with three definitions after definitions and introduction is done we have to learn section number 6 and 5 majorly 6 and 5 aina 3 and 4 will be 10 minutes discussion that's it what is section number 6 capital account what is section number 5 current account transaction all these transactions are going to do the process of management and regulation regulation means there are certain transaction which are prohibited there are certain transaction which are permissible but for the permission we have to get certain disclosure we have to provide disclosures 
this permissible and prohibited transactions will be depending upon whether you are a PRI or a PROI. For a PRI, different type of transactions are permissible, different type of transactions are prohibited. For a PROI, different transactions are permissible and different transactions are prohibited. So next to 3 to 4 classes are permissible, prohibited. You should be understanding PRI, PROI. PROI definition is very simple. A person who is not a PRI, I mean the money. But for that, we have to first understand what PRI. What is PRI? Person resident in India. If a person resident of India, in India is called as PRI. If a person resident out of India is called as PROI. PRI is again divided into four categories. Totally four categories. Only first category we discuss them as of now. Shall we? Don't write anything. Write and I'll make you guys write the definition completely in the class. Twice. Indama sound or sound up. Indama disturbance or sound up. Voice clarity on the pin charges on my 20 minutes. In the option here, I just turned it 10 minutes. Even expert days are class cancel just an expert days are a little PRA. What is PRA? Person resident of India. Carefully listen, focus on the process. PRI is divided into how many categories? Four. Out of the four categories, we are now starting only the first category. Only the first category. Under the first category, we are going to define the section into three categories. The first part Matra and Okay. Understand the overview properly. We are discussing the definition of PRI. Under PRI, there are how many limbs? four categories of PRIs. Out of the four categories, we are discussing only the first category. Out of the first category, they are divided into three categories. Our three categories the first point discuss this thing. First, the first category is applicable to an individual. The remaining three categories are applicable to an artificial person, companies, body corporates, partnership firms, etc. etc. Next three categories, every couple of them are artificial persons. The first category is applicable to an individual. When does the individual be called as resident or non-resident? Artificial person is very simple. Major part of section will be based on individual. An individual will be considered as a person resident of India if he satisfies the first category of point. Later says there are certain exclusions and inclusions. So section A, Ella divide Chadha Manam. Section, section number is also important. Section number 2V. Section 2V is going to be divided into how many categories? Section 2B is divided into how many categories? Four categories where the first category talks about individual. Remaining three categories talk about artificial person. Under the first category, individual will be considered as a PRI when he is satisfying the first point. But later stage, even though he is not satisfying the first point, there are certain inclusions and exclusions. What do you mean by exclusions? Basically give me the wordings here. Then we will start the exact wordings of that. He means other than Chai Exclusion means he was meeting the first point, but we are excluding from definition of PRI. That means he was meeting the first category. First category, the wording discussed just now, he has met it. But because of certain reasons, for certain purposes, he is going to be excluded from the definition of PRI. Or he was not meeting the definition initially, but because of certain purposes, we are going to include him and call him as a PRI. Logic okay now. Second two categories are then called under first in first category. We will start the first category. A person resident of India. Person resident of India. Wording should be a simple concept. Person resident of India means a person who resides in India. Resident of India meaning he must be. Meaning he must be. He resides in India. He resides in India for how many days? For how long? Any day, some 182 or residential status section 6 1 answer 7 182 or more in how many which year current year or preceding financial year almost the same but we are using the word more than 182 not less more than equal to Gadamma Manam. Income tax lane uses some 182 or more days, but here we are using the word more than 182. If at all he stay in India, he is residing in India 
for 182 days, he will be not meeting the definition PRI. If he is not meeting the definition of PRI, he is indirectly classified as a PROI. In order to classify, classify as a PRI, his residence in India must be for 182 or more days, sir, more than 182 days, sir. One eight, more than 1 days, 182 days in the course of, in the course of which year? Current financial or preceding financial? Preceding financial. Based on his residence in the preceding financial year, we are going to regulate his activities in foreign exchange in the current financial year. Current financial year, he will be classified as PRI or PROI. PRI, if he is residing for how many days? More than 100 days in the course of which year? Current year or previous year? Previous financial year, preceding financial year. Now give me options here. We are PRIs or PROIs. Out like and end of We have always stayed in. For the preceding financial year, for the complete 365 days, we were in. Are we meeting the definition? Are we meeting the definition? Definition states that how many days? More than 182 in the course of wording is important. In the course of preceding financial year, then you are called as a person resident of India. Now, for example, we for the first leg of the year, first, and this concept starts from April to March. We got a financial end in April to March. Malinko meaning this book and April to March will be considered as a financial year in this place. Now, for the first 100 days, we were in India. Sure. Next, agricultural. Seven, seven. Okay. For the next, any days. Next, say, uh, hundred days we were in Russia. Then next, next agricultural. Russia, no, just Uganda. Yes, Uganda for. 50 days then we came back to India for the rest of the days feel out not in Raucham India Mali last any days in Dagocham say any days which number one 150 are 365 count just even a man 115 this was our stay in India for the preceding financial year whether we are resident or uh, PRA or PROI, we have not stayed in India for more than 100 days at a stretch. At a stretch, we were not in India. Are we still considered as a PRI? That's why they use the word in the course of. That means during the financial year, in any number of calculations, if your complete stay in India was more than 180 days. So give me the wordings now. Person resident of India means a person who resides in India for more than 182 days in the course of preceding financial year is called as PRI. So, first part of definition is done. First part is done. Now, we have to do exclusions and inclusions of the definition. Books open. Books open. Books open. Books open. Books open. Books Person Achana person a resident of resident in India means boy sponsor it person resident in India means Sachin my person a person who resides resides in A person who resides in India for for how many days? For more than 182 days. A person resident of India, person resident in India means a person who resides in India for more than 182 days in the course of in the course of which year? Current year or preceding financial year? In the course of preceding financial year. 
<clears throat> a person who resides in India for more than 180 days in the course of preceding financial year. Because I'm going to add the keyword now, but excludes. Remember this definition first, like itself is using the word, but excludes, right? But excludes. Right, I'm going to explain this word, I'm going to use this word, right? Write the word, but excludes. Uh, PRI definition, we are dividing in how many points? How many points? Four points. Out of this, this is the first point, which is applicable to whom? Individual. Later, three points will be applicable to a artificial person. Under the individual itself, we are excluding certain people. Then look, capital right now. Capital A. Clear it, Kardaka? Kardaka, okay, no? Leave it. Understand this? A person, a person in the preceding financial year. This discussion which we are going to put in now applies only when he has already met the first sentence. First sentence, meet in Taravati. In Yasna, we are excluding a person. That means this person has already met the first sentence. That means he has already resided in India for how many days? More than 180 in the preceding financial year. For say in the financial year 22 and 23, he was in India for 365 days. For which financial year? 23, 22 and 23. For the financial year 23, 24, he will be classified as what? PRI. Unless he is excluded from the definition. Are we clear with this? If his stay in India in the preceding financial year was more than 182 days, he will be classified as PRI unless he is excluded. When will be excluded? In certain circumstances, three reasons he can be excluded from the definition. So first thing, he was in India for 365 days in the last year, but he is now leaving India. He is what? Leaving India, he is going out of India. I mean into India or going out of India? He is going out of India, going out of India for employment outside India. For say, you have qualified your child accountancy, you got a posting in US as a child accountant, you also did for say CPA. Based on that, you got an employment in the US. You actually for the previous year were, were residing in India for 365 days. But this year, you are going to leave out of India for, for what purpose? For employment. If you are leaving outside India for employment, are you going to come back? Are you going to generate any GDP to India? Are you going to generate any income to India? Are you going to come back to India? You are going to stay outside India? You are going to do transactions only outside India? Are you going to be requiring any foreign exchange? No. Once you got settled in US, you will be using only with currency. As a person, as an Indian citizen, are you contributing anything back to India? No. Because you are not contributing anything back to India, though your stay in the previous year was more than 182 days, I will consider you as a PROI. Because you are going out of India for a particular reason. What is the reason here? Employment. In the same situation, you are going out of India. You have qualified your child accountancy. You are going out of India for a private visit. You are going out of India for a tour. International tour. For say, you are going to Dubai for 10 days for international tour. Are you going to come back? Are you going to come back and still contribute to Indian GDP? Indian growth, Indian employment or Indian uh, industry? Yes. Are you going to still be beneficial to the country? Yes. I want to consider you as a PRI. Only with the reason why you are leaving out of India happens to be employment then. If it is because of employment, you are not expected to come back in India in the foreseeable future. You are expected to stay out of India. You are going to do activities outside India, which is not going to benefit India as such. You will be classified as what? PROI. Even though your stay in the previous year was more than 180 days. The first reason why the person will be excluded. In the reason, when the person is when the person is going out of India for, for taking up employment in India or outside India. If he is taking up employment outside India, then he will be treated as PRI or PROI. Even though his stay in the previous year was more than. Now, come back to this. We were in India for the last year for 150 days. We were in India for the last year, last financial year 
PCD financial year for how many days? 150 days are we classified as PRI from the first basic point? We are leaving India, going out of India for employment. Are we PRI or PROI? First initial stage, we were not even classified as PRI. There is no requirement of exclusion. Exclusion requires only when initially you are classified as PRI. That means your stay in India was more than 180 days in the current year or preceding financial year. So continue the process. If in the preceding financial year, your stay was more than 180 days, but in the current financial year, you are going out of India for employment. You are called as because you are excluded from the definition or included in the definition. So leaving any work, can I use the word going out of India? I'll use these wordings in the definition later. A person who has stayed in India for more than 182 is going out of India. He goes out of India for taking up what? Employment in India or outside India? Outside India is not expected to generate anything to the country. Is considered as a PR. Now you are going for a travel purpose. You are going to Dubai for travel purpose. You are considered as PRI or PROI. Your stay in the preceding financial year was 365 days. This year you are going out of India for travel. PRI or PROI? PR? So what is the first purpose where you are excluded from the definition? Goes out of India for what? Employment. Employment in India or outside India? Outside India. Or the second situation where you are going out of India, your Mali word is saying you shall among goes. Wordings repeat chain on other part of interview. A person who goes out of India, out of India for carrying on any kind of a business or vocation. Vocation and demand professional activities of He is carrying on. He is going out of India for what purpose? For either carrying on a business out of India or carrying on a profession. We all know business is something where in initial years we'll be incurring profits or losses. We will take certain amount of time to establish and be uh, known to the public at large, then we'll start making profits. If you're going out of India for establishment of a business, whether you're going to stay there for 10 days, 15 days, 20 days or number of years, that means you're going to create employment outside India. You're going to create GDP growth outside India, in India. Are you any beneficial for the Indian country? Then you're considered as a PR. Why? What is the second reason where he's going out of India? He goes out of India for carrying on business or vocation in India or outside India. Wordings go through time. A person who is leaving India, going out of India for taking up, taking up employment in India or outside India. Second concept for carrying on, carrying on what? Business or vocation in India or outside India, outside India. Give me the wordings from the beginning now. PRI first and you put definition at the end. PRI means a person residing who resides in India for more than in the course of but excludes a person who goes out of India for taking up employment outside India or carrying on business or vocation outside India. Are we clear? You are not outside my Clear? Last case. Last situation. For example, Perendra Manikanta. Sir, who are you? Manikanta is going out of India, South Africa, Pampitam. Now, for example, he is going out of India, Venanama. Proper Venanama, my wording is confusing on that. He is going out of India. For example, Manikanta after he qualified child accountancy. Okay, for example, he has written CA exam. CA inter exam has been completed. Exam is result rather than time. Anyone summer? Probably some 40 or 50 days. Okay, one and a half, two months ago, Kali Gundam. In the meantime, he started chatting with the girl online. Okay, he chat started chatting with a girl online who was a resident of Ekada. who was a resident of 
నైజీరియా రిజల్ట్స్ వచ్చినాయి రిజల్ట్ వచ్చిన తర్వాత హీ వెంట్ అవుట్ ఆఫ్ ఇండియా టు మీట్ ద గల్ ఎక్కడికి వెళ్ళాడు హీ వెంట్ అవుట్ ఆఫ్ ఇండియా రిజల్ట్స్ వచ్చిన తర్వాత సెలబ్రేట్ చేసుకోవడానికి ఎక్కడికి వెళ్ళాడు నైజీరియా హీ వెంట్ ఆఫ్ అవుట్ ఆఫ్ ఇండియా బాయ్స్ వినండి హీ వెంట్ అవుట్ ఆఫ్ ఇండియా ఆఫ్టర్ పాసింగ్ సిఏ ఇంటర్ ఫర్ సెలబ్రేటింగ్ హిస్ రిజల్ట్ అండ్ హీ కేమ్ బ్యాక్ టు ఇండియా he stayed in nigeria for say one week and he gave, came back to india whether he is going out of india whether he is going out of india was for the reason of employment or business or vocation or none of the reasons if it is for none of the reasons whether he will be excluded from the definition no that means he is still classified as a pr i person resident in india now after coming back to india he is continued a ca process he completed a ca final అయిపోయిన తర్వాత మళ్ళీ ఎక్కడికి వెళ్ళాలి రిజల్ట్ ఏం చేయాలి సెలబ్రేట్ చేసుకోవాలి కదా మా రిజల్ట్ ని హీ వెంట్ అవుట్ ఆఫ్ ఇండియా నా ప్రాపర్లీ అండర్స్టాండ్ దిస్ నా ఆఫ్టర్ హీఈ్ అ చార్టర్డ్ అకౌంటెంట్ హీఈస్ గోయింగ్ అవుట్ ఆఫ్ ఇండియా అగేన్ ఇక్కడికి నైజీరియా హీ వెంట్ అవుట్ ఆఫ్ ఇండియా ఇప్పుడు చెప్పండి అమ్మా హీ గాట్ సెటిల్డ్ దర్ హీ డిసైడెడ్ హీఈస్ గా స్టే అవుట్ ఆఫ్ ఇండియా for what purpose he is going out of india for a any other purpose other than employment or business or vocation where his intention state that he is not going to come back to india in the definite period in the uns in a certain period of time he is not expected to come back to india but he is going out of india for what purpose either employment no business or vocation no for any other purpose where his circumstances indicate that he is going to stay out of india for a certain period or uncertain period we don't know when he is going to come back to india it is for an uncertain period he will be classified as a p r o i listen to the wordings properly here a person who goes out of india proper you know a person who goes out of india for any other purpose that means i'm excluding employment business or vacation for any other purpose where his circumstances indicate that he stay outside india is for uncertain period if he is going to stay out of india for uncertain period we are going to not expect anything from him in indian country we are going to exclude him from the definition of pri we are going to classify him as a proi that means he is going out of india for what purpose any specific purpose or any purpose any other purpose for where his circumstances wording stole manak properly where the circumstances indicate he stay outside india for certain period or uncertain period he stay outside india will be for a uncertain period of time then he is going to be classified as a proi malli ade wording he goes out of india are we clear at the definition from the beginning listen to the definition answer cheyakandi just listen to the definition person resident in india means a person who resides in india for more than 182 days in the course of preceding financial year but excludes a person who is who goes out of india out of india capital point a ipind tarata sub points add cheyandi for taking up employment outside india second point for carrying on business or vocation outside india for any other purpose where the circumstances indicate his stay outside india is for a uncertain period of time if any of these three points are satisfied and he is going out of india for these three purposes he will be classified as pri or proi proi these three purposes are called as specified purposes exam lo write and specified purpose ani for our understanding exam lo rasa apdu em chestaru you have to mention all the three points there is nothing called a specified purpose under fema act one understanding i use the word specified purpose these three are called as what specified purposes now he is leaving out of india for travel pri or proi he is leaving india for medical treatment he is leaving india to meet his family outside india pr he will be classified as proi only when he is leaving india going out of india for specified purposes specified purposes include how many points three points what are three points employment 
what is all about taking up employment outside india carrying on business or vocation outside india or any other purpose where circumstances indicate his stay outside india for a uncertain period these are the three specified purposes for which if he is leaving india going out of india he will be classified as he is excluded from the definition of pri are we clear from you inka definition avale ma lad anna the word here properly understand this again ide example continue cheyandam money kind is going out of india going out of india after he qualified a ca exam he went out of india for one week anta cheyandam ma he is going out of india after he is qualified uh, chartered accountant he is going out of india for how many weeks one week whether he stay outside india is for a certain period whether he is excluded from the definition that means he is classified as a pri now after going there he decided to stay there he decided to stay for example he went out of india so this is the financial year 23 24 23 23 four financial year starts from 1st april 23 ending on 31st march 24 the preceding financial year proper ga nanamma ee word add avuthu kodu i am adding another word here previous financial year preceding financial year his stay was how many days 365 days if he stay for the pre preceding financial year was 365 days whether for the current financial year he is classified as a pri or proi pri unless he is going out of india going out of india for what purposes three specified purposes now he is going out of india here he is going out of india here for the three specified purposes a three specified purpose lo edanna oka purpose ki is going out of india during the current financial year can i use the word goes out of india goes out of india, out of india for what purpose three specified purpose if it is for those three specified purpose is called as pri or proi he is included excluded from the definition he is leaving here three specified purpose excluded now he is leaving here for other than the three specified purposes he is going out of india but other than those three specified purposes pri or proi pr i you know doubts on that one clear now he is going out of india for those three specified purposes he decided to stay there for three months whether he stays certain or uncertain certain now in the next financial year in the next financial year he was already outside india can i use the word goes out of india because he has traveled in the preceding financial year in this current financial year the next financial year 24 25 was already outside india now after being outside india he decided to take up employment outside india he went for what purpose travel for a three months but during his travel procedure he decided to take up employment there is he going out of india in this current financial year no but he is staying outside india i'm going to add a word here wording sat chese answer sevandi but excludes nunchi start chestanu but excludes a person who goes out of india or stays outside india avadadainamma last year lo travel chesundachu he is continuing to stay out of india he will also be classified as a p r o i so i'm going to use the word from here on even start cheyali goes out of india or stays outside india for any of the three specified purposes are we clear you know doubts na ఇది రాయనమ్మ డెఫినేషన్ ఇస్ డన్ ఇంక్లూడ్స్ డెఫినేషన్ ఇది ఎక్స్క్లూడ్ చేస్తున్నాను తర్వాత ఇంక్లూడ్స్ డెఫినేషన్ యూ విల్ బి ఏబుల్ టు రైట్ దీనికి ఎగ్జాక్ట్ ఆపోజిట్ రాసుకోవాలంటే ఇంక్లూడ్స్ డెఫినేషన్ అండ్ ఎక్స్క్లూడ్ స్టార్ట్ చేయండి రైట్ క్యాపిటల్ ఏ క్యాపిటల్ కింద రాయండి క్యాపిటల్ ఏ పర్సన్ ఎ పర్సన్ హూ గివ్ మీ ద వర్డింగ్స్ గోస్ గోస్ అవుట్ ఆఫ్ ఇండియా ఆర్ stays outside india stays outside india for what for how many purposes and most small a small a first point wordings taking up
और पॉइंट बी कैरिंग बिजनेस लोकेशन वेर आउटसाइड इंडिया और पॉइंट सी आश्रम में कर दाका अ पर्सन हु गोस आउट ऑफ इंडिया और स्टेस आउटसाइड इंडिया फॉर टेकिंग अप एम्प्लॉयमेंट आउटसाइड इंडिया और कैरिंग ऑन बिजनेस आउटसाइड इंडिया बिजनेस लोकेशन आउटसाइड इंडिया और फॉर एनी अदर पर्पस where circumstances circumstances indicate his stay in india or outside india outside india for what for a certain period or uncertain period These three are called as for our understanding specified purposes. Example of the matter, three points are there. Clear idea? You can talk okay, na? Okay, two minutes. Our topic I put there. I'll explain the wordings here. Fine. But excludes. Exclude a person goes. Stays for business or vocation or for a uncertain period. Now, give me the opposite concept. A person who was staying in India for less than one eighty days or less than or equal to one eighty days in the preceding financial year, but comes to India or stays in India. I don't know my wording. Same exact opposite. A person who is in India or outside India. His stay in India for preceding financial year was less than equal to 182 days in the preceding financial year. That means he is not meeting the first point, but he can be still included in the definition if he is coming. Wording saying, "Nama going out of India, goes out of India, but staying in Chennai, no, comes into India or stays in India for taking up employment in India or." Carrying on business or vocation in India, or any other purpose where the circumstances indicate his stay in India for a uncertain period. You know, now it's now. Then that person will be included or excluded. But sir, first point lo already excluded. Now what use chase sir? Already first concept we use chase. I'm not using in the second category. I'm not using it here as exclusion. I have used it in the first point itself. Now I am going to start writing capital B. Capital B states that a person who comes into India or stays in India for any purpose otherwise than otherwise than is a negative sentence. Excludes is also a negative sentence. Max what you are the money bagger minus into minus that will convert into a positive sentence. He will be included in the definition. Final definition. Let me what you say, sir. But excludes and in the words even used, sir. Otherwise than, otherwise than is also a negative sentence. Now a negative negative sentence will be cancelled out. He will be included in the PRI definition if he is coming into India for three specified purposes. So simple answer, basic answer. I will give you different possibilities. We will do examples on this tomorrow. I will give you examples first. Definition last close, sir. Sir, damra. Right, another word last sentence one. Question, capital B, capital B. What is this thara? Right, a person. Give me the wordings, boys. A person who, who what comes in, comes into India 
और टेस इन इंडिया फॉर फॉर द पर्पसेस फॉर द पर्पसेस अदरवाइज देन for the purposes otherwise than otherwise than and the wordings but excludes but excludes and otherwise than both will be cancelled out and will be left with a positive sentence or a negative sentence now positive sentence that means a person who comes in india or stays in india for these three specified purposes will be called as a p r i come on right small point a first point in rail for taking up employment in india second point for taking up line amma same kada nodle kanna ma rayandi definitions important for exam for taking up employment in india second point for carrying carrying what business or vocation vocation where in india or for any other purpose where his circumstances indicate Vice, random. Where his circumstances indicate his stay in India for a certain period or uncertain period. These three are called as what? क्वेश्चन नंबर ओके सेक्शन नंबर सेक्शन नंबर टू वी स्टार्ट विद द फर्स्ट कैटेगरी फर्स्ट कैटेगरी ऑफ डेफिनेशन सेक्शन नंबर टू वी हैज बीन डिवाइडेड इनटू हाउ मेनी कैटेगरीज टोटली फोर फर्स्ट कैटेगरी टॉक्स अबाउट अ इंडिविजुअल next three categories talk about artificial person individual has been again for our understanding divided into three categories first category person resident in india means a person who resides in india for more than 182 days in the course of preceding financial year but excludes a person who goes out of india or stays out of india for employment or carrying on business or vocation outside india or where the circumstances indicate his stay outside india for uncertain period and a person who comes into india and stays in india for any purpose otherwise than for taking up employment in india or carrying on business or vocation in india or for any other purpose where circumstances indicate his stay in india for uncertain period of time Any doubts now? <laughs> this is this is only the first part of section two V. We are going to tomorrow continue with artificial person. Then we will do certain questions. Thank you, ma'am.